And finally, let's say a quick word about the uniqueness of the solution that we have just found. Uh, so as usual, when you want to show uniqueness, you, you uh, assume you have two solutions and we will get to a contradiction or to something showing that uh, they have to be equal to each other, right? So we assume we have two solutions, u1 and u2. We create the uh, difference function v, u1 minus u2. They are going to satisfy the same equation because it's just a linear equation. They're going to satisfy the same uh, boundary condition. So I'm back with the Dirichlet boundary condition, okay? But you could show exactly the same thing on the uh, Neumann boundary condition. And now the initial condition is just going to be, well, uh, if they both satisfy the problem with phi of x as initial condition for uh, t is equal to zero, that's just going to be equal to zero, okay? So, uh, that one. So either you can uh, solve again the equation and show that zero was a solution that, okay, that's fine, but uh, that's not going to prove that it's unique. What we can do is that uh, you, you take again the same equation, so um, um, dv over dt, and on the other side we get k d2u over dx2, and we multiply each term by v, okay. And we integrate between 0 and we've got equality, we integrate between 0 and 1 with respect to x, okay, so dx. All right, so that we get these equations, okay, so one side minus the other side is equal to 0. And the thing is that when we are, we, we are just going to see what, what this gives us, okay. This term, I've got a derivative, uh, so that's... Uh, Oh, it's, it's a V, it's V everywhere, okay. <laughs> it's V everywhere, yeah, sure. Uh, v, my, the difference of my two solutions. Um, so, uh, that first integral, I get something like uh, V prime times V, uh, the derivative of V with respect to T times V. So this is really the derivative of, uh, with respect to T of, v square, well, 1 over 2 v square, okay, so, uh, um, but my integral is with respect to x, but, well, you, we've seen many, uh, many theorems, uh, assuming everything goes fine, we can actually rewrite this as the derivative according to t of my integral with respect to x, right, so that's uh, really the parameter dependent integrals, all right, because but t would be my parameter as my um, integral variable is the x one, right? So this is uh, this is it. So that's the first part that we have here, and the second part. Uh, well, we're going to perform an IBP so that my d two here the x square is just going to be well. You just put um, I don't know. Let's put. Um, W uh, one uh, W of uh, of x is the v, so that um, W prime is just going to be dv over dx, okay? And z uh, prime of x, I'm doing an IBP. The, the derivative would be the d two square d two uh, of v over uh, dx square, so that the z of x would be, well, I just have one derivative, so d over dx over the, of uh, my v function, right? So this is, uh, here we have written the uh, IBP uh, uh, formula using those uh, those conditions, those, uh, those functions, all right? Um, so uh, that's the IBP, so from the first one here, we get that uh, this is going to be equal to zero because my v function is supposed to be equal to zero uh, at both ends. So you, you see that if ever you had chosen the Neumann boundary condition, that is still going to give you zero uh, because then uh, maybe the function would not be zero at both ends, but uh, the first derivative according to x would be zero. So what do we have here? Uh, so let me just rewrite this. We have one over t, uh, two d over dt of my integral between zero and one v2xt plus uh, k integral between 0 and 1 dv over dt square uh, dv over dx uh, dx is equal to 0. Okay, so um, let's now integrate with respect to integrate between uh, 0 and t 
dt that whole steps all right so first part of course it's just going to give you uh that one when i integrate oh that was dx so now when i integrate this thing with respect to t i'm going to get uh, 1 over 2 integral between 0 and 1 v2 of xt dx uh, minus 1 over 2 integral between 0 and 1 v2 of x0 dx but this we said is equal to 0 because this is the uh, initial condition that i give to v right so this is one thing and then i've got that part uh, plus um, k integral between 0 and t integral between 0 and 1 dv uh, square over dx square dx dt thing is that and the whole stuff should be equal to zero. The thing is that that last part, uh, this one, okay, this is going to be positive because this is a square, so it's positive. I'm doing the integral of a, a positive function, this is positive. And then I'm doing again the integral of a positive function. So that has to be positive, okay? And so what I'm left here is with this thing, so which is also uh, positive, all right? Uh, and so, uh, so what it means, it means that the, um, the sum of two positive things being equal to zero, it means that they are both equal to zero separately. So we get that v square of xt is equal to zero, so that v of xt is equal to zero. Okay, so that's it for the uh, uniqueness and that's it for today's class. We do have one last bonus video which was actually supposed to be the introductory video to the class uh it's just going to remind you of some methods we used last uh, year um, but i thought it was maybe too long so if you have time uh that could be a good idea to watch this uh bonus video other than that uh well as you see <laughs> my document goes uh further than the one you have be and it has a lot of detailed calculations and this is exactly actually what you are going to do during the labs of next week okay so uh this coming wednesday we are going to um work on uh tutorial usual tutorial related to what we've uh, seen today and what you should uh, remember the message you should remember from last year and uh next week uh using the same ideas we're just going to expand our uh, knowledge or um, methods for solving differential uh, partial differential equations of those kinds uh during some labs okay on monday and probably we will need a bit of the tutorial to also for that okay thank you very much see you soon bye